All right, guys. So from the lesson today, we're gonna move on to the backend, right? So in other words, we want your app to work with a kind of a backend server, a backend database, so that you can share, exchange, and also back up your data. So let me come using this example um, to explain it. So why do we need a backend? So right here, as you can see, we are able to create a list of friends. We are able to add new friends here and show it on the UI. So everything works fine. But let's think about if this is the app you are making, you're making a social uh, messaging app, you want to track all the friends, right? So all, right now, all these friends are saved in your local device, actually it's in the memory. And, um, but one day you change your device, you reinstall your app, you update your app, and that time the data will be gone. All right, change your phone, unless you just do all the copy and files data from one phone to another one, which is pretty hard to do. So that's why if you save all the data in the backend database, all right, not on your phone, but the friend list is saved in the database, then that solves all the problem. You don't need to worry about changing the phone, or updating the app. And also another important thing is when you have a backend, then multiple users could access the same backend, the same database so that they can exchange the, the information. Right? So the best I, uh, example would be a messaging app, right? So if you are talking to somebody else and you can't just send a message only to your phone, you need to send a message also to the other's phone. Um, and then the way to implement this is we all send the message together in one simple server. And then we use the server to exchange just like a centralized uh, area to exchange the information. All right, just like kind of a post board that people all post different things there and people all go there to check it out. So you don't need to worry about how to save the data and then it's all managed by the server, by the backend. So most of the app today, if you need some kind of functionality uh, related with data, you probably need to think about building a backend or server. All right, so in general, uh, you will need to write your own backend server or application to make this happen. But um, you know there are simple ways to do it. There are certain services available for you to um, uh, build a database very quickly so that you can just directly integrate with your app, right? So the service we're gonna highlight and try to uh, ask you to use is called Firebase, all right? So Firebase is a very successful startup company and later on was acquired by Google. So let's actually go to Firebase. If you go to, uh, just search for Firebase. All right, so you should be able to find out this very quickly. It's coming from Google right now. So click on this link here, all right? So this is the Firebase service portal. And what you wanna do is actually get started or you actually go to the console. You probably need to sign in first. Let's actually try to go to the console. It will ask you to bring your username here. And I'm just gonna to try to do um, uh, one of my own email and then try to go from here, all right? And then log in with your Google account. All right, so I need to do the uh, authentication. So here to enable it. All right, now once it's done, I come back to this um, portal here. So this is the Firebase portal. All right, so the first thing you need to do is add a project. So I do have a lot of other projects going on, and then you need to actually add a new project here. All right, so I'll just uh, you know do something here. I think you probably need to choose, uh, oh, actually I can choose a new name. So let me try this. And I can do uh, butter. Oh, actually, I need to choose one project. And then, do I, can I change the name? Adding project to one of existing projects. Can I actually do it without adding it? Yeah, I can type the name. So, butter summer. Okay. All right, continue. And all of this, uh, there are some kind of features provided by Flutter. And then if you want to enable all of this, let's just do this one, that's fine. And then they ask you to configure a Google Analytics account. So this is a, a different service that allows you to track the usage and everything. So you do need to have a uh, analytics account, right? So you can do this or not. You know, I'm not gonna comp uh, complete things. I'm not gonna disable this because this is not really used in most of the features for mobile. So I'm just gonna create it in a very simple setup. All right, so you can also enable that. You just need to add another Google Analytics project. So I don't wanna uh, talk too much about the other services. Let's just focus on this backend uh, database as a service, which is called Firebase. And this is a very successful backend service. A lot of mobile developers are using it. Right, so now once it's done, let's click on the continue. 
And now you're coming back to the Firebase um, portal. Okay, so Firebase is a service, as a backend as a service that allows you to do a lot of things in a very simple way. For example, we talk about uh, authentication. So if you want to build your own login, sign up your user, user database, and you need a lot of work, and especially if you want to make it very secure. But Firebase can handle that for you if you use that authentication service. We're going to talk about the database service, and which is allows you to save the data in different ways. We'll talk about the storage service, which gave you the capability of saving files. There is hosting service that allows you to do a little server. You can run some code on the cloud, which is called a Firebase Functions. There are a lot of machine learning features that's pretty cool to actually use. So a lot of things you can do with Firebase. Okay, but we're going to focus on some of the very basic things. All right. So first of all, we need to set up the Firebase with our app. And because this is a separate service in the cloud, and then we need to actually put this service into our app. Okay, so let's actually see how to do that. And there is some special guide here. So if we go Flutter, Firebase, okay, just always follow the uh, official documentation here. Okay, so let's actually find out what's the best way to do. And then I think it's the very first link, adding Firebase to your uh, Flutter app. Okay, I think this is one good guide to follow. Actually, let's try to follow this. All right, so I'm gonna go through this very quickly and then you can definitely come back and then read this documentation uh, with more details, okay? Step one, create a Firebase project, which we already did. This is the Firebase project you created. Once you are in this page, you're good to go. Now, step two, you have to register your app with Firebase, okay? So this is how you do it. So go back to this Firebase portal, okay? So click on the setting button here, and then there is a project setting. All right, so in the project setting here, you have to register your app with this one. Otherwise, your app doesn't know where your backend is, and also the Firebase backend doesn't know how many apps you're trying to use, which app can come to use the service here. So you have to put your app here, and then you can do iOS, you can do Android, you can do even web application, you can even do Unity game engine development, right? So uh, I'm gonna start with the Android because that's something we have been testing all the time. So I'm gonna come here to do the Android. Once you do, and coming back to this screen, all right, so they ask you to provide the Android package name, right? So where to find it? So you have to go back to your folder uh, project. And then this is the time that you have to go to this folder called Android, all right? So you go to Android folder, and then you go to this app folder right here, open it. And then you actually go to this build.griddle, all right? And then inside this file, scroll down, and then you will be able to find something called application ID, right? So this is the one that uniquely determine uh, the name of the app internally, okay, from the code point of view. So copy this one over. This is actually the name you choose in the initially when you uh, create your Flutter project. So I'm gonna copy this ID here and put it here. So you must got this one right, okay? So this is the, um, the unique ID for your Android application. And then the rest thing you can ignore it. Okay, I'm gonna just register the app, finish the step one. So once this is done, okay, this part, very important guys, they ask you to download this google-service.json file. You must download this one. Okay, let's actually download this file and then save it locally. All right, so once you download this one, you need to put this file into this folder right here. Okay, so they show you where to put it. So let me actually show you how you can do it. So I'm gonna open my folder. This is the file, right? So I'm just gonna right click and copy it. Just Control C, I'll just do Control C, copy this. And then coming back to my uh, project. Now you need to put this file in the right position. Okay, this is very important. Just follow the instructions. So open the Android folder again, because this is for Android app. And then open the app folder right here. Okay, that's it. And then you wanna put this file directly under this app folder, so if I, Control V, paste it. That's gonna bring the file here. And make sure the file name is Google-Services because I have done this many times, so I have multiple uh, files here. So make sure the file name is like this. And then you click on OK, all right? And the file will be here. So if you open the file, you can see this is basically the file you are downloading. So what it has is obviously, it has all this project information you set up from the Flutter so that we know where your Flutter project is, this is the URL from Flutter, some of the credentials, 
the name of your app, some of the special ID. So with this, from your Flutter app, when they load the file, they can actually find out where your Flutter project is. Sorry, the Firebase project is. That's how you can connect each other. So that's why this step is really important. You make sure you download this file here. Once this is done, let's click on next. And then you will need to add some of the uh, Flutter SDKs. Okay, this one gave you a very uh, clear uh, examples on what to do. All right, so let's actually do this. Now this is for Android. All right, so if you do LS, there will be different steps. Let's actually do the Android first. So for Android, all right, so you actually will need to do uh, a few things. All right, so you have to go to the project level build.grid. Okay, let's come back here. Just be very careful. There are actually two Gridle files. One is this one here I just showed you. There's another one right here. So this one is called project level. So if I you know close all the folders, show it again, okay? So Android open it. Now directly under the Android, this one, project build.gridle, this is called project level gridle file. This one just does very high level configuration for the project. All right, so we want to modify this. You want to make it make sure you check all of this exists. Okay, one of them is like repository. You should have Google. I think we do have this one. One of them is you have the class pass dependencies here, dependencies, and we don't have it. So we need to actually add this one. Just copy this line, and then just add it right here to the top to the end. All right, and then we also need another one. Google under this all projects repositories all project repository Google, so we're good. All right, so this file is done. Just make sure you're adding this class pass into this configuration. Move on, next one. And then they ask you to add the app level build.gradle file. So this is the one that I we already opened. So and open this app folder and the build.gradle. This is the file we're talking about. And then we need to add this uh, plugin, Android application. So let's go here. We already have this one, uh, apply com dot Android application, and we also need to add a Google services. Okay, I'll copy this one here, and then we don't have it, so let's actually put it under this one here. All right, and then after that, then we're done with the um, configuration for Android. Okay, let's click on next, and then we are good to go. All right, so this is how you finish one setup for your Android application right here. All right, so. Um, make sure everything has been changed on the app, uh, Android folder, so we're good, and then just close this folder. All right, so this completes the setup for your Android app. Now remember, if you are doing the iOS, you will need to do a totally different process. Okay, so we'll show you that one as well in a different video. All right, so once you set up this one, all right, so you're done with the only the setup. You also need to set up the SDKs and the code you need for Flutter. Okay, everything we're doing is on Android and you can't really directly code Android here in a Flutter environment. So we actually need to add some other dependencies for your Flutter project. Okay, so let's actually keep going. Let's come in back to this one. Okay, we finished a lot of those. We registered the app, we download the configuration file, and now we need to add the Flutter plugins. So we need to add the Flutter um, SDKs. All right, so basically you will need to add this uh, Firebase core this one here. Let's just use this version here. Okay, I'm going to copy this one here. Now, this is the time we need to go back to this YAML file and to add the dependencies. I already explained that this file, whenever you need to add a new dependencies, new plugins, you have to go here. All right, so all the dependencies should go by default under this dependencies. Okay, not the dev dependencies. We should use dependencies. And also be careful that the indentation here matters. Okay, so this SDK means that SDK entered the folder. So right here, we need to actually go to here and then add this Flutter core, and that's the version we're using. All right, let's try to do the package get, make sure we can download this package well. All right, so that's how we can get the Flutter uh, uh, Firebase core library. Now, this one does give you the very basic fundamental capability of Flutter, all the services, but then if you wanna use certain specific libraries and packages, you do need to add those extra libraries there, okay? So I'm gonna show you the two very commonly used uh, packages in Flutter. I think one of them is called Firebase Authentication. So I'm gonna add this one here. All right, this is the one. And then there's another one called Firebase uh, Real-Time Database. So in this documentation, they actually use call Firestore. I would recommend to you not use this one because this one sometimes give you a bug, but then still doesn't work. It's not really a big deal. 
But also, uh, I want to introduce another one about a real-time database that actually found it out. So I think you can go to uh, Firebase plugins to find all the existing packages. I think the one I'm talking about is called Firebase um, database. This one right here. All right. So this is the uh, the package I'm recommending to use for the database. And then if, once you find it, let's actually click on installing. And this one shows you what you need to do for this dependency. So I'm going to add this one. All right, so there's three libraries. Right, let's try to get all the packages. So we got a core authentication or a database. So most of the time we're gonna use these three services. And then when we, if we need more, and then we're gonna come back to do this one more time. All right, so that's a basic setup, right? So right now everything should have been set it up. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the app. Let's actually run this app, okay? This time because we made a lot of changes in order to make sure everything has been cleaned, I'm gonna stop this app right here, stop it, and then rerun everything to rebuild it so that everything will be picked up. And then the first time we're probably gonna take a little bit of time since there's a lot of new library to download and um, to be integrated. During this process, if you ever seen any kind of errors, okay, uh, definitely Google the error and see um, any kind of fixes because this whole flutter is still in development. Uh, there are different version issues or um, some kind of environment conflicts. So the um, there's there, there I have seen all of the different uh, you know issues along with all the setup process, but. Most of those you should be able to find the answer from Google. All right, so I think right now everything has been set it up. All right, so with all the uh, new libraries and everything, and then next step we're gonna show you how we can actually start to use a lot of these um, uh, libraries. Okay, right. before we do that, okay, let's actually try to verify things are working. So for example, the very first one we're gonna do is probably this login screen here. All right, so we're gonna basically maybe sign up the user with a Firebase authentication service. And so we will need actually to use this Firebase authentication. So go to the login page right here. And uh, let's, you know, let's just do something really quick here in when you click on the login button right here, right? So if you wanna do the authentication, you actually have to do something called Firebase authentication.instance.reference.instance, um, .instance, something like this, right? And now you can bring this um, um, code and the reference directly. That means you actually already set up the SDK correctly. So it automatically import this Firebase authentication. All right, so that's something you can actually use to verify that the libraries and everything has been set it up. All right, so I'm gonna delete this one. I will leave that for the next lesson.